Hey, I'm Mark Edward Lewis, and welcome to Cinema Sound Studio B. I've gotten a lot of questions about music stems and how do we route them, not just how many stems do we need, um, and that's usually product or production dependent, but um, how, how do we route them so that I don't have to do one stem at a time? And every digital audio workstation is different. And since a lot of folks use Logic, and I do, Logic Pro on a Mac, I wanted to show you how to do that in Logic because Logic says it can do it one way, but it doesn't work. My buddies and I have found this out. It just it doesn't work in a complicated mix. I want to show you the foolproof way of routing all of your stems so that you hit one button one time, it burns them all out at once, and the routing is great, and the labeling of all the files is done, and you're set up to win. Let's check it out. All right, so we're here in Logic Pro, and uh, you'll have to excuse this vest of mine uh, and its crazy moray pattern. <laughs> but um, uh, we're going to go through a cue from Blade of Honor that has a lot of strings, orchestra, dubstep effects, things like this, and we want to be able to split these out. So let's check it out. Dive right in. We're going to take a look at this cue. Just listen for a second. So you get it, right? There's a lot of strings. There's things like that we want, things we want to split out. We want to create those stems, and we don't want to have to go bang, oh, uh, run one, and then run another one, and then run another. We want them to all go at once. But we have to get our routing right first. Let's dive in. All right. So first, let's take a look at what this looks like down here. There's some of these uh, kind of weird effects and things. This is actually a special woodwind instrument, uh, specifically kind of for her character. And then up here are the double basses, the violas, the viol uh, the cello, the violas, the first and second violins, uh, some low synths. Here's a piano effect. And then I got some percussion up here. Okay, so, um, oh, this is just my hard drives backing up. Yay, back up, Jesus saves, and so should you. <laughs> okay, so how do we route this? The first thing we need to do is route the individual instruments themselves to a specific bus that they get. Then from there, we route them to the reference bus, not to the master output yet, because you need to have all of your buses go to a reference out that has all of the elements put together, and then to the final output that you'll hear. Remember that we're never burning the final output that we hear because that's going out to your audio interface and going to your speakers. That's not really something we want to burn. We want to burn a bus as our reference master. So let me show you how we're going to do that. I've actually got all this routed already, but I'm going to do a few more for you to give you, some, to give you an example. Okay, so uh, let's just take a look at the violin, viola, cello, bass. Here they are. And if you'll look here, actually, let's kill that for a second. You'll see, move over. This is going, if you're not familiar with Logic, this is contact. This is the actual uh, sound source sample player. This is a, a reverb bus. And then this is where it's going. We want to make our own version of this and send this to what we would classify as a, let me zoom out, uh, let's call it, uh, let's start at bus 60. Lots of buses in Logic. We're going to send the high strings to bus 60. All right, there's bus 60. Here's the second violins. We're going to send them to bus 60. Oops, there they are. And you can see stuff's already going there, which is nice. We're going to send the violas to bus 60. And so far, we're just doing some simple routing. Pretty simple. And then the celli, we're going to send to bus 61. Hooray. 61. Nice. And the basses, bus 61. Now, if I go over here in the mix window, I can scroll down. Here we have, scroll up, bus 60 and bus 61. It was made automatically. That's pretty dope. So let's label this. We're going to call this high strings. And we're going to call this low strings. And notice that these are going to the stereo out right here. 
That, and that's fine. You'll be able to hear them, but that doesn't help us be able to make that reference master output that we want to be able to also make. We don't want to have to burn an, a special output just for the master, right? That's lame. We should just burn them all at once and we'll get that handled. There's something else we should note though. See how there's plugins on all these buses that I have here? Well, I have a special little EQ that I like to use. It's this special little one. And I would put it across the master output if I had one, but since each one of these buses needs to have this EQ on it as well, because they're each going to have their own stem, I need to copy this. I'm going to option drag that to this track and to this, sorry, this bus. And then I also, because I never want any bus to go over zero, I'm using this free plugin called the W1 limiter and uh, always at minus 0.2 decibels. And I'm going to add that to these two buses as well. Now they won't go over zero, and they've got my cool little mastering EQ on both of these buses. So theoretically, if I play this, we should have strings here. There they are. Awesome. So they're all grouped, and we've got that routing part, but we need to make that reference out. Here's how we do that. Uh, and I'm just using these buses arbitrarily. You do them for your own organization. We're going to call bus 64 the reference out. And look, it immediately makes this bus, even though it says aux 34, don't be confused. Look at the input up here. It's aux 64. We're going to call this the reference output. There it is. And now if I play, oh, well, let's make actually take this one over there as well, 64. Now it's okay that this is going to the stereo output because we want to hear this. We don't, we don't want to hear the individual buses by themselves. That doesn't help us a lot. Now it's going to the stereo output and that's lovely. Uh, we, uh, want this same E. Actually, no, I'm wrong about that. We don't want the EQ going here because it's been done already. We do want the limiter to go there, however, because even though these won't go over zero independently, when you sum them together, they easily can. So we want that. And we're good to go. Now, um, let's go to check out some other tracks that we might want to do. That's strings. Uh, how about some of these? Uh, oh, we definitely want to have a separate instrument just for this Captain Wood cool sound that we have. We'll send this to bus, call it 62, and it should create that automatically for me if I scroll over here. Bus 62. We will copy our EQ and our limiter. Um, we will send this to bus 64, which is our reference track. So you kind of get this. There it is, reference output. You get the idea now. All right, so what logic would have you believe is that you can use its uh, burn audio files to tracks or whatever. It's up here. Edit, sorry, it's file, export, two tracks as audio files. I've got a couple of tracks selected. And the theory is you can just take a whole bunch of these and say, hey, just do that and it'll burn them all at once. The problem is in complicated mixes, we find it doesn't work, at least not as of 10.3.2. But there is a workaround that we found. It's not quite as fast, but it does work. It'll do it one at a time, but only one button click for you. What we have to do is take these cool tracks that we've just made. That's these three right here. Oh, let me label this as well. Captain, Captain Wood flute. We're going to take these three here and we're going to command or sorry, control click. And you'll see there option T says create track. It's going to do that for us. And then we have them. It's moved them now into a track count here. Doo -doo -doo. There's Captain Wood's flute, the reference output, which I want to put here before these muted tracks and we'll take our stems and put it by the reference track. And now they're all four in a row. Awesome. What we need to do now is from the beginning that we want the audio file to be to start, we will create a blank object on these buses. I know it's a little weird. You would put that on a record track or a MIDI track, but we go to the pencil tool. I'm going to zoom in here. Let's say we want to start at marker 60. I'm going to do this click and notice that it has created the name of the track high string. So when you're doing your organization of stems, you want to make sure you label your buses 
and that you do them well. Here we're going to just do this, low strings, and then the reference, we're going to shift click all of these, and then they're going to all come over like this. We want this to go as far as we dare to the end of the queue, which let's say is about here. Once we have these, we can select all four of them and then go to File, Export, the same place we did, but instead of doing three tracks as audio files or four tracks as audio files, which doesn't work, we do four regions as audio files. When I do this, it will bring up this handy dandy window and I want AIF or WAVE, whatever you'd like. I definitely want 24-bit. I don't want to bypass effects plugins. I want those to be created. I'd like to include the audio tail in case I'm short or so the reverb can move on. I definitely want to include volume pan and automation. I don't want overload protection. I want to leave the volumes exactly where they are with that having it off. And um, how this works, why this is cool, is because now it'll also auto name them. Watch this. D O H. We'll call this 1M3 because that is what it is. And I think the start time is, uh, what is the start time? Oh, it's right there. Start time is 01093509. Now look at the resulting file name down here. Every one of these files is going to say BOH1M3, timecode, and then the name of the individual track. How dope is that? We're going to stick it here just for convenience purposes here and bounces. And we're going to say export. Now watch what it does. It's going to go one at a time. And it's not as fast as doing burn tracks, you know, which burns them all at once using all the multi multi-processing. Um, right now, this is only using about one of these processors. It's not really multi-processor aware. And now you'll notice it's doing the next one down. And then it's going to do the next one. And then finally, the one that will take the longest is the reference output track. Because it fires on all the track. These are just firing the tracks that are being routed to the individual buses that we created. And here's the reference output, which should take just a little bit of a moment to get this done. And this saves so much time, you can go and have lunch and have, especially if it's a long queue, a 10 minute queue, it could take you an hour or more, especially if you have 32 or 64 stems that you have to make to go through each one and wait for it to burn. What a lousy thing. But now with this workaround, Hopefully they'll get it fixed, but you can do this and make it right and save a lot of time. All right, let's check out how we did. There's a bunch of audio in here anyway. We're going to import the audio files. There's the bounces for the wrong queue. Here we go, bounces. There they are. Uh, we're going to add all. And look at these file names. Done. So awesome. We're going to add them. Uh, let's see. This is the reference output. Let's just take the strings. Low string. How about the high strings? How about the low strings? There's nothing there for a while. And then they're going to come in here in a second. And then the reference output's there for us. It's fantastic. And a really easy way to make this happen. Look, I love Logic Pro. I'm maybe not a fan of Apple, but I'm definitely a fan of Logic Pro. And I wish they would fix this bug because using that burn audio tracks is so awesome. It burns them all at once. It's multi-threading. It's so dope. But right now, as of, what, 10.3.2, it doesn't work. It messes up and doesn't quite do what you want and certainly doesn't allow you to have the automation burned in, which is everything, right? You can't just use MIDI. Sometimes you got to move the faders and use automation and you're going to need that. So this burn regions in place is super useful. It may take a little bit longer, but not for you because you still hit one button and you can walk away and have lunch and come back and it'll all be done and labeled. So dope. Come on to the Cinema Sound uh, forum and the blog for this particular posting. And ask us questions about how you do it for yourself, especially if you're a Cubase user or digital performer. Let's see if we can get you up and running in the same way. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you're